Hey guys, welcome back to the Off The Script podcast. Uh, it's just me today. Unfortunately, Joe cannot be here, but we do have a special guest. Uh, David, how's it going, man? I'm good. How are you, bro? Yeah, I'm good. I'm real good. Yeah. Um, I know you did a podcast yesterday with AJ and Georgie Boy as well, I believe, yeah? Yeah. I'll yeah, so good. you've done that this week as well. So you've been on a couple of podcasts now. <laughs> it was a good chit chat man but i can talk so there's loads to talk about it's not a problem yeah all good all good uh so i want to i want to just start with the question that probably everyone's thinking how yeah. did you find bodybuilding <laughs> <laughs> how did that happen do you know what bro i think i was always i always loved sports so i used to play football um and so after i sort of dropped away from football in like my sixth form years mm. um Mate, I just got big, just got a little bit on, on the bigger side. So I need to just find something and then just mm-hmm. find the gym. Just started um, on like a little journey of weight loss. Yeah. Just trying to lose weight. So I was just, you know, cardio most of the time, hit workouts most of the time. Um, and then I met two guys in the gym who, because I was actually about to leave the gym because I was, I was happy. Weight loss was fine. I was just kind of cultivated like a fit-ish yeah. lifestyle. And I remember I was about to leave the gym and the manager of the gym, who's now one of my closest mates, um, mm. was like, where are you going, sort of thing. You, you, you need to, like, where, where do you think you're going? So from there, it just started to, he helped me and just started getting me to start lifting weights. And, and I took it quite well. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, and, yeah, it was just a year in sixth form where I just kind of dedicate myself to my A-levels and the gym. So yeah, that was like mad bro. Yeah. yeah. That was, that was the same for me pretty much. Uh, yeah. I think I started a bit earlier than you, but uh, it was still the same thing where went to the gym, wanted to lose weight. Um, started off by doing fuck loads of cardio. Then all the people there were like, what are you doing? Yeah. And then yeah. started weight training and the rest is history. So yeah. Yeah. Sick. Uh, so you've been training now, how many years? So I started in 2018. Okay. Late 2018. Um, no, not late. Early 2018. And mm-hmm. so it's been about three years now, going on to three years. And that is, for most people, especially in the natural side of this sport, that is quick. Oh, where, yeah. where you are now versus what, like when you started, like you don't get many people like that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, um, uh, the the person I always think of as being like he's been doing it for a like a while, but the people I see as making the m- amount of progress you've made are people like Keefe, you know. Yeah, you know what he's like. He he lives oh. and breathes it that. So, Crazy. What, what what has like got you from A to B? Where how how did you go from go, being in the gym to begin with to then approaching AJ, for example? Like, how did that happen? Oh, so, I mean, you probably have the same experience of first year uni where your mind is just out there partying with, like, yeah. friends. Just, <laughs> it just wasn't the best. But my mind was in, like, um, the gym. So I wasn't even... My mind was elsewhere apart from my lectures. Yeah. And so I was just spending a lot of time in the gym. Um, and I always looked at some people on, on Insta and I was just bodybuilders. Um, and I was like, wow, how did these guys get into such incredible condition mm. and I was like okay cool like I had lost weight but now I want to try and achieve that kind of condition and that kind of muscularity that these guys had um, so I just started going to the gym properly then that's when I kind of started taking it a lot seriously like my weight training started looking at like diets of you know high protein low carb that kind of thing yeah. and I kind of adopted that from for my first year mm. and so in my first year I was just all in literally all into just building muscle, burning, uh, using body fat, yeah. sorry. Is this and, still in 2018? Is, it, is this 2018? No, no, no. It's 2019. This is 2019. 2019. Yeah, 2019. The whole Are you, so you're 20 now? So I'm 22. 22, okay. So, I, so it's a bit weird. I I did A-levels. My sixth form experience was three years long. So my boys, they went to like uni a year in front okay. of me. Mm-hmm. And, so, and then my course is a four-year course so it's like oh god gone. damn okay yeah. yeah that makes sense now i was like i was trying to figure out i was like how how old is he i was like has he had a gap <laughs> year like what's going on here yeah it was good it was just like when i left football i was i came from like a different school and then i had to go start my, okay my okay gotcha which was 
how it planned out. But um, yeah, so that year I was just all in, 2019, all in. Um, and then I think I approached I approached AJ in 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah, March 2020. And I think that's when I first saw you. I remember him posting you like maybe for the first time on his story or something. I was like, I'm going to follow this guy. He's going to be someone <laughs> <laughs> I got to watch out for in the future. So, Oh, wow. It was, uh, it was interesting when I, you know, because I actually approached AJ whilst I was in uni in 2019. Yeah. Um, I approached him late late 2019 probably around like october december uh-huh. i just sent him an email just just to find out if he could help me with regards to like a time frame that i wanted to get into condition yeah. by um and you know when you're working with that kind of you know level of athlete you i didn't know that you needed to take a lot of time off in terms of preps like 20 weeks for a natural yeah. bodybuilder or there's a long period of time when it comes when you're trying to get conditioned mm-hmm. and so um yeah and so i didn't work with him at the time and i had actually was in the process of filling out an application um, okay. for him and then I, I came across it again in my email in my drafts like march mm. and i just randomly pressed send i with no intention of competing with no intention of doing anything i literally just honestly bro <laughs> it was not i didn't even know because i'd come off the gym for a while um, you just I, walked into it you're like ah, fuck <laughs> it, send it bro, <laughs> <what happens. laughs> it was it was nuts because i just i literally just saw the email i was like it had the details of like all the details from four months ago when i first got the application yeah and i'd been at the gym for like you know, three three months it just wasn't just wasn't training i was like okay cool he ain't gonna get back to me anyway so let's just send it and then the next day you get a response and yeah. you know it's just all good to go straight away and i was like oh snap shit oh, I, you know i've got to start taking this serious i can't wait yeah, this month. you're in the deep end yeah that, that is the one thing like i think it's probably the same with everyone who's been with aj but when you start working with AJ, the turnaround and everything was so quick. Like it went from, I went to zero to a hundred really, really quick. And it, yeah, it was the same with me, especially like for me, cause I went into my prep for 2019 with the idea that I was going to compete. I knew that in 2019 I was going to compete. Wow. Um, but I, I didn't have the realistic idea of what was possible. Mm-hmm in the time frame like like you said like so i i came in at like how much was i weighing i think i think at, at christmas time of that year um so christmas 2018 i must have been over 240 really i was i was big man and not oh. a, not a good big like a sloppy big like a i've i'm fucking fat big um so i lost a, a, i lost like I don't know how much, like leading up to like March, April time. Well, I think March, it was, yeah. I think it was started. Yeah. I started with him in March of 2019. So I was like, I was like, I messaged him. I was like, Hey, look, yeah, I'm ready to go. Let's do it. Let's yeah. do a prep. Um, and to begin with, he was like, it looks like you've got a lot of muscle. Um, but then in check-ins, he realized he was like, fuck, I don't know how much of this is fat and how much is muscle. <laughs> I, don't, I don't actually know what's going on here. So, like, uh, that was a wake-up call, like, like yeah, you say, yeah. it's just like, I, at that point, the amount of weight you, I had to lose and the amount of time that I was given, it was just like, it's rough. So, wow. yeah. And, and you do you remember, like, your, your, your stage weight? Like, how long was the prep? Oh, shit. I, um, <laughs> my stage weight was... 178 pounds oh, so wow. i was i bear in mind i'm 6'1 so yeah it was yeah, like I, I think at that weight honestly i think because of the amount i had to pull off yeah i lost a bunch of tissue realistically yeah. wow. um and i had a few like issues with being ill at different points where i had like stomach illnesses and stuff like that so that probably had a bad impact, but we still managed it very, very well and uh, still managed to, yeah. to at least get on stage. So, yeah, yeah. That, was, that was a blessing. Right. But coming back around to you, yeah. you step up there your first time. <laughs> and what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it was, uh, it, was, it was an awesome experience. I'll be sorry. It was just so cool. Um, you know, especially from the onset, just having a coach with high expectations of how you're going to perform. Yeah. Like I said, I was very new um very naive to the sport as well so even yeah. just having a coach like 
like AJ, he could, you know, foresee quite a lot of things that were going to happen in terms of the prep. I mean, I didn't have any knowledge of bodyboarding at the time. Um, mm. So I was just focused on the process. I wasn't like, I was just trying to block out the the winning, the competitive, the competitive side of me. Because of course, yeah, everyone's competitive, but um, I knew that I wasn't doing it for that reason. I was mm. legit just trying to look at the process because I really wanted to sort of like learn and understand how you do what you yeah. do, how you, everyone does what they do in this sport. Yeah. And, and I learned a lot. And that's why for me, the, the, the win was just a bonus. I really just thoroughly yeah. enjoyed learning. Yeah. And so now I'm in, 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 in a state where okay, I'm always going to be learning, always going to be learning, but now I can sort of add in that competitive edge a little bit and start looking at, you know, growing within the sport um, and progressing, you know, different goals. And me and AJ have got some goals set down the line. So, and I, I, yeah. from what I understand, I've seen, obviously, some of the banter and stuff going on in stories. And yeah, yeah it looks like you've got a bit of a roadmap. Do you, do you mind, like, sharing that with some of us? Like, what, what do you sort of plan on doing at the minute? Um, like in terms of competing, yeah, yeah. So you're in an off season now until when? Yeah, so off seasons till twenty twenty three. So I finish uni. Basically, it's all just depending on uni. Yeah. So uni, I finish next year. Yeah, I finish uni twenty twenty two summer, and then um, from there, just priming myself ready for twenty twenty three prep. I think I think that's what the plan is. Uh, I hope I don't get, I, I don't rush it and I'm just excited to jump back on stage next year, but I've got my, my dissertation to do. I so. have the same shit. <laughs> <laughs> you get that feeling, like that itch, like I had it post-show where I think in yeah. the first check-in post like prep, I was yeah. like to AJ, like, I want to compete next year. And he was like, but <laughs> no, no, you're not competing next year. Leave it. It took uh, me ages to get it out of my head as well. Yeah, I feel you. I do, I do. But um, I feel like, especially just because um, I had the time off last year to prep. Like, we weren't even going to prep last year. We were going to mm. prep this year. Um, the goal was to prep this year, especially with lockdown and stuff. So, yeah. I remember I was at football one time, just with my boys, and I was like, I can't prep next year. I can't. I mean, I'm going into my, my third year. I've got one more year left. I really need to yeah. focus on uni. And so um, I just messaged him. Well, I called my mum. My dad said, "I right, listen, are you guys behind me? Um, I want to I wanna prep this year. And they were like, yeah, do it. And so I called AJ and, and it was game. He's setting the plan. And, and then I was 19, 19 weeks out from that day. Yeah. So, right. Damn. Yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. What, what sort of, I, I'm intrigued, like what sort of food are you actually on right now? Um, so food's, food's, food's sticky right now. So I'm, okay. I'm currently fasting. Okay. So I'm fasting till 6 p.m. every day. Okay. So food is still it hasn't been pushed up since. Okay. So you're you're actually you're doing actual intermittent fasting then. Yeah, I mean, okay, obviously, cool. I like um, my faith. I'm yeah. a Christian, so right now we're just yeah. in a period of like fasting. Yeah. So um, that's going on until March, and that's been that way wow. since. Yeah, we we started fasting wow. in January. So imagine just stepping off of stepping off stage in. October, well, well, kind of like November, because that's when we were still prepping for the BNBF. Yeah. Since then, like Christmas, my birthday, yeah, I got into like the rebound. My my post show was, you know, as any well, my post show. <laughs> <laughs> I know where this is going. Yeah, okay. My post show was just, you know, I'm just madness in it. But um, to, 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 <laughs> what did you do post show? What what did you actually? Well, do? My food, they, it didn't even make sense. But like, I couldn't give you yeah. uh, a reasonable answer to the food consumption that I did eat because it was just ridiculous. Just a like, blur. It was legit. You might have had like a jar of Nutella with a side of bagels. I don't know. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> just that kind of thing. Biscoff spread, man. Biscoff spread. Oh, you know, like that. Definitely. <laughs> but, um, crazy. Yeah, it was crazy, man. So, which was, to be fair, having that two weeks, off made me you know want to come down anyway want, yeah. want to go back structure so yeah. i fell into a good routine with my food my food is only shy of three thousand on the cat on a training day i'm at two two seven on a on a non-training day right now and wow. especially getting all that food in between you know 6 p.m and midnight it's like mm. it's a lot it was a bit of a struggle at first digestion was a bit off and all over the place but now it's just settled in very nicely yeah. and and i know that when we go back into like the gyms in April and, and when fasting finishes in March, which is in a couple of weeks, 
yeah, just ready to really start okay. pushing up food, pushing up body weight. Yeah. Um, and start really growing, I guess. Yeah. Are you, how, how are you finding uh, stuff at the minute on that amount of food? Are you able to make up any sort of reasonable progression or is it like a bit stagnant? Like Honestly, like I'll, I'm genuinely the strongest I've ever been right now. Um, I, my setup at home is decent. So, you know, just having a barbell and a pulley system works wonders. But, um, you know, I, I, well, I've never really had a, or went into like a, a, a massive phase. So mm-hmm. I never really looked at lifting heavy weights. So my prep numbers were just, you know, prep numbers. Like they were like my all time best numbers. Yeah. And so coming out of that and actually being in a constant maintenance sort of cal- yeah. calorie range, it's allowed me to sort of progress on those numbers mm-hmm. and hopefully just get stronger as when we push up. What, what do you define as strong for you? Like what would you consider strong? Hey, I'd, First I'd, numbers. I, I mean, I actually don't know. I, I saw your, I saw your, your list. Um, I just went for your profile earlier last week, and I saw your two ten kg, and I was like, snap! Uh, your two ten deadlift. Man, it, pulling <laughs> when that gets to that amount of weight, like honestly, it. I can't explain because I have now, like, I, I have one video actually of me pulling two forty for a single now. Oh. So, I yeah. pulled it for a single. It wasn't a cl- it wasn't a good looking single either. It was like to get it was out. like my back was b- starting to bend. Oh. Like I was shaking all over the place. We got it up. But it was like when yeah, when you get to that amount of weight, yeah, I'm, I I could only do it probably because of the weight that I am. Like I, I couldn't do it if I was like one ninety for example at my height. I wouldn't I'm, have the leverage yeah. to do it. Now I am two twenty seven. Okay, currently. Right. Yeah, that's good. But you're tall as well, so limbs wise, that's it. Yeah, yeah. I have, I've got some like, for me, I've got, I've got quite short legs for my height. I've got oh, yeah. quite stumpy legs, um, but I've got a long torso. Oh, okay. Long arms. So, for me, I actually am kind of built for deadlifts. Thinking about mm-hmm. it, but I've got a few like little injuries that I've had in the past that make it a bit. Oh, fair. That's yeah. amazing. So just trying to work around them, especially when you're lifting. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense so wow. with you your let's let's say let's go with deadlift while we're on it what what is your current deadlift like what way so at, home, at, at home i've only got 210 key so that's why i noticed it and i'm putting that for reps now which is fuck yeah you know, man that's wow. sick we, we, honestly i just can't wait to, to start putting more because i'm honestly my pv during prep was only 200 for like five and now i'm doing you know 210 for like plus nine um, yeah, that's great when so you're I, starting to like when you're moving like 200 kg plus for yeah. above 10 reps yeah that is strong that's fucking strong man so <laughs> you know my hip injuries are just not the well not the best and i see guys who even you know mm. um what's the word they weigh less than me and they're lift they're pulling numbers so i was like wow fair play yeah that's, that's one movement i do yeah. definitely want to progress in, in the office it's funny it's like kind of come full circle for me because the reason why I invested so much time last year into deadlifting yeah. was because I, I, when we had Keithy on, I started to speak to like Chris a bit more. Um, obviously, he is like, I guess, the king of deadlifts, right? For us, cool. he's like just ridiculous yeah. numbers. Um, and I had the goal um, of trying to get as close to his numbers as I could within yeah. like before I started another prep. Yeah. Um, so that's why I started slamming deadlifts. Um, to be honest, looking back at it now, mm. I probably shouldn't have gone as hard as I did. <laughs> I was, it, it, it quickly became like, literally, how heavy can I lift? Okay. As opposed to like, yeah. okay, am I taking progressions in terms of reps and, you know, getting adequate stimulus, you know? So, yeah. Sense. yeah. Um, but honestly, lift-wise, deadlifts, like I said, I'm only working with 210 right now um, because that's all I've got. But squats, yeah, were, you know, five... Back in the gyms, it was like 200 a side, a side, 200. Yeah. Now I'm just, you know, maxing out on 210, mm. which is great. Um, my my push movements have always kind of like been my strongest. So, yeah. you know, benching 140, inclining 130, Strong. just, trying to, just yeah. trying to progress those because I know I can. Especially when we're back in the gyms, you know, my mm. my, um, my lifts were really good back then. My push movements yeah. were really good. So I've just had a lot of time to really focus on 
the, the, the basic movements with a barbell, which has enabled me to sort of like progress on them quite well. Yeah. Um, and just really enjoying training. It's like really enjoying training right now. So. That's funny. I, I'm, I'm pretty much the exact same. I'm just like, I've got barbell, I've got a bench, I've got a squat rack and I've got, yeah, yeah like 200 plus in place. So like, like just rinsing those compounds and like, yeah. but I, I, I didn't bench as well. Like before, before uh, prep, I had a little peck niggle. And as a result, I haven't touched barbell until this lockdown. Oh, wow. Like barbell bench, really. So, um, yeah. How's, that? How's, huh? it How's it feeling now? It feels all right now. Like that, I think the amount of time off that I've had at intervals over the past year yeah. has actually, for the first time, like taking that time off has actually given me the recovery time I needed to get over that. So, yeah, um, yeah, I don't have that issue anymore. Fingers yeah. crossed. Um, and yeah, we're slowly progressing, pretty much the exact same way. Well, that's good. Real yeah. good to hear, man. Real yeah. good. So, um, yeah, coming back around to you. So you you got you you got with AJ. Um, you did your prep. Yeah. You're now in an off season. Yeah. Um, what other goals and like big things do do you want to do in the next year or two? <laughs> Um, got some time and obviously you've made a statement as well <laughs> to a lot of people oh, it's, 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 that's that's awesome to hear you know um with the off season it's really just about treating it the same way that i treated prep mm. you know um because i found a really good routine with and and, and uni and bodyboarding kind of like fitting in nicely right now uh, especially this year yeah so um i'm I, just really just trying to progress in the gym, progress outside the gym. Yeah. Um, and then, so when I do return, if it is 2023, just make it a, a really good, you know, showing for myself, just making sure that I did progress to a certain extent um, upon last year's showing. And, you know, we'll still, I, I still think that we'll probably still compete in the UK DFBA and the BNBF. I didn't get a chance to compete in the BNBF. Mm. So it'd be nice to, to compete in their federation um and yeah you know we haven't really we, me and aj haven't really even discussed you know competitions um, mm. so i think we just kind of know that when we when we do step back on stage you know I, i'm guessing the goal would just be a pro card i, I imagine um but just most more so just have to just have a physique that reflects the progression that has been made in in, mm. in the two years off that's that for me is at the forefront of my mind, mm -hmm. not necessarily anything else. Um, because you know, um, I'm everyone loves this sport just because of the progressions that can be made. So, stepping on stage is just uh, a symbol of the of what just signifies how much progression you have made, mm -hmm. and so that's just what I'm looking at, you know. And 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 then we'll just keep progressing from there, just keep making progress. And if it goes up with the stage, if the stage just keeps increasing, you know. Right. The level just keeps increasing then you know you just keep you know up in the standard of progression and that's just what i look for honestly that's just generally how i look at it okay. um so yeah, uh, one thing i did actually want to get into yeah uh because obviously it's like had a massive impact on you as a person like it that's clear from looking at like your profile what like when you competed you know how you talk on stories and whatever is your connection with god so do you mind like opening up a bit about that and getting into yeah, that? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I've been raised up in like a Christian household. Mm -hmm. um, so, but it was never something that really kind of resonated with me. Mm. Um, it did, obviously, like it taught me a lot fundamentals. I was really appreciative of what, you know, my mum and dad instilled in me, morals, you know, and all that kind of stuff. But I kind of really started um, taking my faith seriously like when after my first year of uni so 2019 mm -hmm. and it kind of you know allowed me to I was completely different so the the two characters that we see now and the ones back then were just night and day because yeah. I was, that's why I, th I was wondering if that was the case yeah. yeah definitely so it was like I was just my character was just a lot different you know where I'm from like a a, a culture where we kind of focus on ourselves a lot and we kind of focus on what we wear. We kind of mm. trying, trying to like not really be ourselves. 
and and I felt like my identity yeah. was just lost, you know, just being someone that I just wasn't, um, yeah. and who I knew I wasn't, and so um, my faith really just kind of gave me my identity, mm. um, and it didn't really allow me to to keep going in the facade of an identity that I was in before, yeah. and so and that's why I was so grateful for the bodybuilding experience because it actually it's not it's something that a lot of people talk about that it kind of takes away from them. Um, they say like bodybuilding kind of takes away from like their relationships. Mm. They really have to be, but I understand like the selfishness of it. But for me, bodybuilding added so much to, to me. Um, it grounded me so much, especially mm. like I said, being from a culture where you, people care about what you wear, what, you, what, you, what, you're, what you're wearing, the, the latest shoes and yeah. stuff like that. And now you enter another community where they don't, <laughs> they don't give a toss about that. Yeah. They care about what's actually underneath your clothes. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so... It that's bad. it man like we're all walking around wearing like toe shoes and <laughs> legit baggy clothes like honestly honestly and it, it balanced me out so much because um i was able to make decisions not based off people not based off anyone but just who i who i am mm. um, and i feel like you know that would, it just laid the foundation for me to start progressing in every area of my life so in my in my academics in my relationships in my bodybuilding you know um in, even with my family because mm. um one thing i was so big on is identity and 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 when you know who you are i believe that you can start making decisions that are for you yeah. you can start building yourself up um in a way that kind of reflects who you want to be yeah um and and i know who i want to be um and i know where what what decisions I'm making to to try and get there, um, and so my faith has really played a massive role. It, it yeah changed changed my life for sure, and 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 I'm just happy to be able to 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 be me in this sport, um, yeah. and and to have you guys you know welcome me in such a way, um, and also like with my old friends, like not all my my old friends, but now my boys and stuff. Yeah, you know it's still the same. The love is there. Uh -huh. They just recognise that you know this is actually who I am. Um, yeah. And I'm just, just being me. It's, it's fucking cool, man. Like, <laughs> it's crazy how, how it works, right? Like you, you found yourself and this is kind of where it's led you, you know? Yeah. Honestly, that's, that's, um, that's cool. Yeah. A lot, a lot of people, it takes them a long time to do that. So yeah. Like <laughs> big ups for getting there. Cause that's, yeah, yeah. it's huge. Um, if, uh, another thing I wanted to cover. So, coming back around to uni so what are you studying where are you yeah so i study international business and entrepreneurship at mm -hmm. university of essex okay uh, so i was i was in cultures i was at the culture campus for the first year mm -hmm. and then i got transferred over to the south end campus so mm -hmm. you know uh, which was which is interesting because you know culture and south end are like night and day you've got the, like, mm -hmm. the nightlife in colchester and south end it just just dead it's just yeah. nothing, nothing there apart from the beaches but um so I was commuting in my second year and so in my second year it helped me um really kind of because because I was commuting I was having to take like a train two trains to to uni so it was like a three hour commute yeah so my 9 a.m I'd get I'd be up I would have left by like six yeah. so with that and I was still going to the gym still like keeping that habit um, I'd have to take my meals with me. I'd have to take my clothes with me. Uh, some nights I might have to stay in a hotel just up there just because, you know, coming back would be too late. So I kind of got really disciplined in that year, um, got really structured, kind of had like a really good routine. Um, and it helped me be a lot more, you know, all in and, and hardworking on both sides. So uni and, um, and bodybuilding. And so, which is great. And so now my third year, um yeah in my first year we were in lockdown so i was just at home all day like Bro. <laughs> online learning so it was just that was it helped but you know the, the gyms are only open for half the time so we go but my routine kind of like took a little bit of a hit hmm. um, with lectures being all over the place and you know having to fit yeah. in training and just you know motivation that kind of thing you know kind of like seeped with uh, online learning and you know are you really learning on online I don't know that's up for debate but yeah. <laughs> but um yeah so I really had to get structured in terms of like getting back into a good routine work-wise and then get back into a good routine um training wise as well mm. so but yeah uni's great got one more year um, Sick, 
yeah, I'm finished next year. So yeah, almost there. For me, I'm like, because I'm in my final year now, so I'm like, yeah. fuck, as if it shit had to hit the fan now, <laughs> uh, you know. So. For, sure. for me, it for me, it's a case of like I, I am actually th- very much looking forward to uni's reopening next month. Yeah. I'm I'm super excited for that because, like you say, me being sat at home or yeah. sat in my like student flat, like doing work on my computer, and that is my life. Like, yeah. like being inside this four walls and the kitchen, yeah, which is also where all the gym kit is. And that's my yeah, life. It's just like, I'm fucking sick of it. Bro, <laughs> oh, I need to get back to a different structure. Honestly, you know. It's crazy. It's crazy. What what uni you go? Uh, I'm in Birmingham. Okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, um, yeah, I'm studying strength and conditioning. So I'm, I guess it's like athlete coaching. That's awesome. Um, so coaching anything from boxers and mixed martial artists to rugby players and footballers. So, um, nice. but yeah, no, it's like, I, my course is practical. <laughs> It's so <laughs> yeah so it's just like well fuck what am i supposed to do um but yeah as soon as shit's opened up man i can't wait i can't wait and we've got gyms opening again in like what seven six seven weeks now seven weeks yeah bro i can't wait i really can't i I'll put a countdown on my instagram so, oh yeah <laughs> yeah i've made a countdown so it just i know i know exactly how many days and hours hey i, I can't i'm doing a tour i'm doing a tour of just all the gyms in Fuck that yeah bro i'll be doing the same i'll probably meet you at some point along the way oh, got to. definitely yeah. like I, I've got boys down in, in ashton um oh sick you know i've been there i've been down birmingham quite a few times i wanted to go train at um scott swench's gym i don't know if that's near you oh um shit what's it called i can't remember what it's called i know which gym you mean though yeah well, i was gonna go i was gonna go check that out last time i was down there didn't yeah. get a chance to um so that's definitely on my list yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure, bro. I can go. Yeah, we'll sort something out, man. We'll sort something out. <laughs> Have you got any uh, plans to get out of this country when everything opens up again? You know, I wanted to travel for my birthday. I yeah. Really, like, me and my me and my sister, we wanted to travel. Yeah. Um, but you know, if everything closed in, it was just dead. So, really, like, no, no, no immediate plans, especially with everything that's going on. But uh, I think they're going to get out as soon as possible for me because they. I think most of them. My sister, she finishes uni soon, so mm. they've, they've got the luxury to go do that right now. I'm just, you know, okay. uh, <laughs> stuck at home, <laughs> just trying to just trying to crack on with my work. But yeah, um, yeah no, I do want to. I do want to get out for sure. I want to go back home as well. Mm-hmm. well. I say home, back to where mom and dad uh, lived. Well, lived uh, okay. back in Nigeria. So do you want to okay. go back home and, and, and check my family out there um, at some point? Um, but yeah, who knows when what's even with when that's gonna happen with regards to like you know. Yeah, the- man, I've got no clue. I like, I've been trying now because I've been trying to get out. Uh, I've been trying to get over to America because I've got mm-hmm. a lot of friends over there. I've been trying to do that for the past two years. Whoa! And, and wow. every t- and every time, I'm like close to getting to the point where I can go. Yeah, shit hits the fan, and really? I just had to cancel it. Like you know, lockdowns, like whatever. So. Yeah, I'm. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get out of the country to properly celebrate my 21st, yeah. which is what I was meant to do. But um, oh, down, being a year late, but it'll be worth it. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> literally just have to go out there firstly, plan everything. You would have yeah. been, whatever. That's, that's the thing with me. I'm like, um, I've always been like big into traveling. So, Good. like, for me to be in this country and know what mm. and not go anywhere else for like a long period of time. Yeah, in my mind, I'm like, I have to fucking go somewhere. Honestly, I have to, I have to, I have to go and travel and do some fun shit. So tell me about it. Yeah, tell me about it. So uh, traveling is one of those experiences that you, you <laughs> just remember some trips that I went on that I just shouldn't have gone on, but I went on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, a funny one I think of is um, one of my friends, uh, Liam uh, Temple. Yeah. He's a powerlifter. Um, oh. He's got a YouTube channel and he's got like a vlog on there where him and a bunch of his boys go to Zanti. Oh, yeah? And it's got, like, hundreds of thousands of views on the video. And it's yeah. just a video of him. Like, it's, I think it's, like, the most viewed video I think he's got on his channel or something. Yeah. And it's just him and his mates from a few years back just being dumb. Just and That's, me. that's me. the whole video. <laughs> it's fucking... Yeah, I, do want, I do want to go out and do some stuff like that, but at the Honestly. same time, 
honestly. There's so many sites that you can see. Um, there's so many places that are just do you want, like there's even places that just scenery, man. I'm just big into into scenery. I want to go do like um, so you know when you go around the Route 66 in in, in America. Sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Want to do that, but I want to do that like in a, in like a camper van. So oh, like, like a proper yeah. RV. Yeah, proper. Yes. Uh, yeah. Staying, just staying in there. Just, just, mate. It would just be sick. Not, not like the conventional holidays. I've had like you know the holidays where you go out, you go stay in like the, the yeah. resorts and stuff like that. But mm. and then nice, like, you know, a lot of people went to Dubai this year. It was very. It was just a lot of the same thing, which was great. But yeah, you no. Know, uh, I'm not going to lie to you. At one point when that second lockdown just before Christmas happened, yeah, me and one of my mates, Rod, he sent me a message saying, I found an apartment in Dubai for two people. It's the same <laughs> as your current rent. Let's just fucking leave. Let's go Let's get out of it. And I was just like, Why you- man. Um, even, even like I, I could have done it feasibly. I, it would have been possible to do it, but it would have been impossible to get the travel pass or whatever. To okay. get over there by the time yeah. by the time lockdown started so we're like oh fuck it we'll just have to leave yeah. it we'll go do buy some other time. you've been so wait so you've been in that uh union con for like over a year now mate. like just i've lo- i'm losing my mind bro, bro. <laughs> <laughs> i've been in the same yeah like luckily i've like because with me i i did up until recently i worked for the university oh okay so as a part of the job role yeah, I, it required me to be on site, so I had to stay and have okay. a flat on site and stuff like that. Um, I don't have that job anymore, but obviously I can't go anywhere anyway. Yeah, so they made it an agreement that like I'm staying now until well, I'll have accommodation here now until July. Okay, but, um, Makes sense. but still, I'm like, I just want to go home. <laughs> I want to, I want to get out of Birmingham. Are you originally from Birmingham, or are you from? I'm from Sheffield originally. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. So, um, yeah, a bit more northern, but um, yeah. I've so lived you... outside of Sheffield for so long, the accent's gone. I don't really yeah. have an accent anymore. <laughs> Probably can't tell where the fuck I'm from. <laughs> oh, so you would train up um, Rotherham then, Old Flex? Yeah, it's um, yeah, so it's very close to where. Okay. Like for me, it's literally a train, a little, a short train ride there. Cool, cool, cool. Go in, but uh, I'm looking at um, this year. The one of my big goals for this year is by the end of the year to own my first property. So on, um, I'm looking yeah. at getting a household property around that area. So not Rotherham itself, but in that end of Sheffield, like yeah. Meadow Hall end of Sheffield, something around there um so yeah fingers crossed i can get that sorted and that'll be my like home base from from then on mate smash it you would smash it you know when i went to go stay up in in rotherham it was a it was a different kind of experience i actually stayed in rotherham yeah. so you know right by the how, train. how was that um because obviously like everyone who's watching this has probably seen the video that aj put out um oh, natty kai green <laughs> yeah. um so how, how did you actually find that rather more experience like being there with AJ and Kuba and everyone else you know I was actually like you probably can tell I, I was like very nervous yeah. very nervous. like um not because like confidence or whatever it's just I wasn't used to being in that kind of environment yeah I train in, a, in a anytime fitness you know mm. even just recently I just transferred to uh you know one of the the best gyms in the area Crayford Weights and Fitness okay and, yeah. And that was just the, the the other half of my prep. But throughout the the, the years I'd been training, it was literally solely out of that anytime fitness, a small little commercial Holy gym. Shit, man. And That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no wonder that was like a culture shock for you then. Mate, it was so, because I was going around, AJ was uh, telling me about all the different equipments and I was just like, wow. I was like, what's that? What's that? And, and then, and it's just, you know, it was just, it was nuts. And then you have like bodybuilders walking around. You have you have women bigger than me walking around. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, this is this is just taken aback. I even remember seeing um what's his name? Jamie, the giant. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Warren he must have just approached AJ. Giant like Jamie's uh, like pictures and videos don't do him justice, right? They, bro, they don't. You see him in person, you're like, oh my god, I know why they call him the giant now. Like it's I was just like 
he was talking with AJ, I just stood behind him. And I was like, Lord, why did you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Jamie's tall. Um, we've had him on the podcast before. And yeah, obviously, cool. like, um, we, I, I try and keep up to date with like as many guests as possible. But um, yeah, he, he's, he's something else, man. He's a freak. He is a freak. <laughs> so he's massive, man. And all of them, him, Kuba, just taken aback by, you know, the physiques in the gym, you yeah. know, when, you know, Kuba's such an, such an amazing physique, you know, Meg has such an amazing physique, AJ has such an amazing physique, and it's like, mm. wow, these guys, you guys down there live, breathe this, tip, this thing, and I was yeah. so inspired, like, I was only there for, what, two days, and I was, I was remember I was in AJ's car, and we were just talking, I was like, bro, May you guys have done something to me because my passion for the sport, although not even being immersed in bodybuilding for so long, yeah. my passion from that day just rocketed. And yeah, ever since ever since then, it's just been growing and growing and growing. I was able to bring some stuff home and apply it to my own way of doing things mm. down at any time. Um, and then even just making the switch. Like I do still have the membership at any time, but predominantly now at Crayford, yeah. just because of the kit, getting used to the kit, being able to... Uh -huh. Um, train as an as the elite athlete that I want to be because up there you it, it forces you to be an elite athlete you know yeah. um, and and I think I was yeah. in in kind of outgrew my environment for a hot sec for sure and, like I needed to yeah to go hang I, I I was the same man like um for the first like I started training when I was sixteen okay. and honestly if it wasn't for the fact that I was training at a shitty little like gym in the village where I used to live, mm -hmm. um, I would have probably been a lot further along, like, and progress a lot more if I'd mm -hmm. have been around like certain people like AJ or whoever, like you are a product of your environment. So Honestly, yeah. yeah. And it, it really shows like every time I'm down at Rotherham, I get the best progression I've ever had. <laughs> Every time I go there, and I just PB on everything. <laughs> Literally, it's nuts. Yeah. It was so nuts. So when I was there, it kind of, um, it, it, yeah, the nerves kind of kicked in sometimes. Like you know, um, not not to if, not to the extent where it kind of like affected my training, but more so just because I was like, wow, like just mm -hmm. taking it back. It was just such a new environment to me, and I was just like, okay, cool. Um, let me not even try and act like I'm the strongest, smartest, brightest person there. There's no I ego he, there. Yeah. Um, I know he's trying to, he's, I know he's joking around calling me Kai Green, but listen, I am like David, small David right now. <laughs> 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 and, and and I'm going to just be David right now in this moment and just train. Oh, um, and, and, and that was it. Yeah. Was it. Here's like, right, let's talk about those comparisons a bit because I think it's kind of oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so obviously people joke about you being a bit of a Kai Green. Oh, yeah. I've seen a lot more stuff, which I think this makes more sense. You're a bit more of a Keon. I think that makes more sense. Um, I wow. think that's, I can see that in terms of like, um, not just like your rate of progression right now, but okay. also how you came into the sport. Yeah. Like you've been in the sp okay. sport for a very short amount of time. Mm -hmm. Um and you've been you and you've been i'm not going to say spotted but you've put yourself in a position where you're around certain people who've made you like suddenly jump up you know and mm -hmm. and like get to that like you you started to progress to that next level just like he has so i could see i, I always think of that comparison that's awesome i mean yeah. keon i drew a lot of inspiration from keon um, mm -hmm. i looked at his you know bear in mind i don't know like i only with him, his recent jump to becoming enhanced was obvious to me. But before then, even the conversation when people used to have a conversation and say, oh, when he was natural, he was actually enhanced. That really, like, I really didn't know the difference. It made no difference to me. Yeah. Um, so I just yeah. looked at him and I was just like, he looks incredible. Yeah. His looks weight so. is ridiculously small. Uh -huh. his V taper is nuts. I just loved his classic flow. Yeah, um, and so I can see I can see some influence. I think in the way you pose sometimes, like uh, there's yeah. some shots and some transitions you hit, and I'm like, ah, yeah, I can see where that's coming from. <laughs> no, <laughs> Kia definitely did influence me a lot um, because I just think he has. Um, I watch his routines, you know, and I just think, especially at a young age, for him to have such an eye for the art of bodybuilding. Yeah, you know, I think. 
like I, even most of the time I look at the you know the golden era of bodyboarding I like mm-hmm. the way they done they did things and I like their training and I like you know those kind of people how they posed you know yeah. the Labradors them they they just incredible so um it was nice to sort of resonate with those kind of people mm-hmm. and sort of allow that to impact and influence my my yeah, man. Um, yeah, that's sick uh, ha- who are your like um who are your like let's say top three bodybuilders then of all time who are your top three <laughs> top three um if i'd have to say like i said this is the first bear in mind this is the first olympia i've ever followed so <laughs> okay okay yeah 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 um, um it was funny that people called me kai green because i you know i not that I liked Kai Green, but I liked his battle with Phil Heath. Like I'd watch that. Um, mm. I'd watch highlights on YouTube, but actually watching the Olympia was my first year watching it. Mm. Uh, but yeah, I liked the sort of Kai Green Phil Heath feud, and yeah. I thought they both just looked phenomenal. Phenomenal. But in terms of three top, I loved Jay Cutler. I loved Jay Cutler. Yes, sir. Really, yeah, Jay's sick. I, I'm I a loved the way he looked and personified bodybuilding. Yeah. Um, Ronnie was fantastic, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Ronnie has to be up there as well. But um, Jay, they were just saying about Jay Cutler. That I was like, wow, you look like just mm. sick. You just look like yeah. an awesome bodybuilder. Um, uh, also, I loved um, Tom Platt. Not necessarily more so for, you know, he has a great physique, of course, but um, his style of training, especially when it came to legs. Yeah. I really learned a lot from him. And so yeah. he was up there. He, um, he's yeah. one of my big influences. He's probably in my top three as well. Honestly, that's just fantastic. Yeah. And who else? I'll just probably go for the newbie, um, Keon. Those are oh, probably yeah. the, three, the three major influences. That's what I can say. Because I don't oh. I don't really... I know a lot of people, I've heard a lot of people talk about like Dorian Yates and mm. um, and to be fair, I've never really, don't really know much about him either. Fair so, enough, yeah. So I've only just taken from like the influences I've had on this yeah. journey and and they they played a massive role. Yeah. Um, Jay Cutler, Tom Platz and Keon. Yeah, um, sick. Think, Good choices. Yeah. Do you feel like you're a bit of a sponge right now? Like Mate. you're still just sucking up all this knowledge, <laughs> all this like Bro, past, literally... present, future bodybuilders, all of it. Mate, you literally took the words out of my mind. Like me and my sister were having this conversation today and I was like, I'm not in any rush to make it seem like I know anything because like, <laughs> I promise you, I know like very little. Mm. Um, even uh, coming off prep, I decided to take like courses regarding like sports and nutrition, regarding like Sick. you know the the, the the athlete sort of nutrition and yeah. side of thing. Just to take in the knowledge, not necessarily apply it to like online coaching or anything like that, but because I just really want to learn. Um, that was one of the reasons even why I came into coaching in the first week. I just wanted to learn from mm. AJ, learn from someone as knowledgeable as he is. I, I've, I, that's the thing, the biggest thing I think now, like about coaching, like yeah. this is something that now applies to me now that I've started coaching is that I, I treat, I, I will give the, like the client the time yeah, and, and teach them something if it needs to be taught to them and and that's exactly what aj did with me and probably with you as well he was just like just opened up answered the questions you know sure for sure i mean i i I came to aj thinking i what i knew he would go off um Mm -hmm. when what i knew was just virtually non-existent and was so (laughs) not even needed that he was like, okay, wait, David, there was one point where he was like, okay, David, please just, just let me do the thinking. And then from that moment, it was just game over. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, sit David, back. But this, yeah, you're confident in, in yourself, but let's now just learn, be a student of the game. And yeah. so right now, I'm taking in everything, using it as such a learning experience and Sick. I want to just soak in everything so that, yeah, if the opportunities do arise, I'm able to like apply it to uh-huh. you know, what I want to do. So, um, yeah, that's me. Have you ever been to any expos or anything? No, I was actually I've never been to any. I like okay. I was going to go to uh, Body Power. Um, I think about two, three years ago. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm probably going to go about early on in my my bodybuilding sort of journey. I'm going to go with my the the manager of the gym that I train at, who's now one of my closest friends. Like mm. I said, I was going to go with him, and um, we just that didn't end up happening for whatever reason. I think just around the time we was very busy, but. No, I've never been to an expo. Shit, bro. Yeah, when when expos happen again, obviously we've got the Arnold. 
and okay. stuff like that, definitely go to Expos, um, especially the Arnold UK. That's the one that I'm most excited for. Like, I- I'm excited to be in a position where in the UK we can actually watch pro shows again. Wow, yeah. Like, that's crazy to me. So, yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I really do want to go, like, bear in mind, half of the experience has been, like, at home or during lockdown. So once mm-hmm. we're out there again, just going out into sort of networking with people, taking a note, like, even from yourself, from from whoever's around mm. um, that can, like, teach about all these kind of things. Man, Expos, honestly, they are one of the biggest places for just learning. Like, it's, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. The amount of people who, from the age of 16, when I first went to... Yeah. like body power to like present day the amount of people i met through that who've like had a massive fucking impact on me wow it's especially <laughs> like um a good example for me is like this is well this is one of the reasons why i discovered i wanted to do bodybuilding not just be like fit yeah and have abs like every fucking guy who goes to <laughs> um uh is when i like it, i think yeah it was 2016 i i was going past the body power stage where the the shows were on yeah. And I saw Rolly Winkler on stage wow. walk up on stage just after he at the time he'd had like an issue with his gut for a while, right? Okay. And he spent that year shrinking his waist with waist trainers and whatever. Wow. And he came out on stage and it was lights out. And I, I just stood there for like five minutes after it, just like, what the fuck did I just watch? Honestly, I can't, I can't I'm even trying to imagine it for you because yeah, I just, just looking at pictures of him. I'm, I'm just like, what the flip is that? Like, yeah, because yeah. um, he's like, he's short. He's obviously shorter than me and shorter than you, I'm sure. But like, on stage, when he stood on his own on stage, he looks like he's fucking ten feet tall because he's just that big, man. It's crazy shit, crazy. Yeah. But that's, that's that's the point where I knew. Uh, that's that's the point where I was like, fuck, I, I want to do bodybuilding. So, yeah, it's yeah. definitely yeah. something worth going to because if you if you're chasing that feeling that you got from ultra flex that's yeah. probably the place to be like you get that same feeling there i think you know it's um it's great i mean phew, training itself is something that you know i've always kind of like had a passion had a passion for and so when i go like and immerse myself well i know that when i go be in these kind of environments it will kind of like equate to the kind of goal that i see myself getting to um whether that be you know the, the different stages out there or, or just looking at someone and be like I can even say I don't want to do that you know I don't want I don't maybe not want to get that big or whatever it is I'm not too sure but I've never had the kind of any kind of vision other than just progressing and just looking at progressing so and I think when you're in them kind of environments it can have it can even speed up your your rate of progression like my, my word when I went to Rotherham it sped up my mindset you know more so than my training yeah and so um definitely something that i'm gonna you know get into um when when it does open up and just see what more i can yeah how much more i can soak in i tell you what man i'm i'm like lit t- talking to you right now has got me excited for you oh, because like you, like i i've not been in like this sport as like that long either like i'm still yeah. a novice really okay. um but I've I've had enough experiences to know that what you've got in store is you're, you're going to have a lot of fucking fun, man. You're going to have a lot of fun. Hey, I'm just, oh. it's going to be great to meet just so many nice people like yourself, bro. Honestly, like I'm just, a, I like meeting people who, you know, can add to your journey. And I'm, mm-hmm. you know, so many people, they, they don't realize, like I even had a message from, from someone so early on that you probably know. Um, uh, what was her name? Kaylin, I think. Yeah, Caitlin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, just her physique is insane. Number one, number she's two. She's kind of like you as well. She's she's hey. that. She's on that level where ridiculous potential. Yeah, she has. You, you, crazy. Like, I just look at her and I'm like, I think she's what nineteen. Yeah, she is now. Yeah, I think so. She, I think she was actually. Um, she might have actually been the person who pointed you out to me. I think. Oh yeah. I think she might have just been like she because we're in a, a couple of group chats. I think she might have just posted you on there and be like, "Look at this fucking guy." <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> no, I mean she was one of the first people who who actually messaged me and was yeah. like, "Wow, you're you're gonna do so great." And and not that I needed that, but it was just, or not that I didn't need it, but I didn't know that I was gonna be approached by such nice people. Yeah, you know who who maybe see stuff in you that you may not see in yourself. And yeah, and and I think that's why. 
it was really nice to to join this yeah. kind of community and 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 to just to yeah just these are points I'm just taking from this from the sport itself about mm -hmm. how you know you can just meet so many great people who who are all on that journey to progress mm -hmm. and it's a, it's actually like community's journey rather than just one it person is, yeah it's sick yeah. UK bodybuilding's going places it is I'm excited for it. I, I saw the way people backed James Hoddenhead. I saw the way the people backed um, what's her name, Rhea. I saw yeah. the way people backed, you know, um, everyone who's competing, man. It was just, it was great. It was, it was really yeah, good man. to see. Uh, let's go on. Um, I'm just gonna share screen so we can have a okay. quick look at your Instagram feed. Sure. That's uh, we got Jackie Boy up front. Okay. He was actually like probably the first person who kind of. Who I looked at and I was like, wow. Really? Yeah. He 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 Bro. was like I loved his lifestyle. He was just nuts and and his physique at the time. I think I had a, a picture of his glutes come up on my explore page. <laughs> <laughs> I had a picture of his glutes come up yeah. on my explore page and I was like, I've never been impressed, I've never been impressed by a man's bum. <laughs> like, I was just so I was yeah. like, what the heck? I'm pretty sure there's a few people out there who have his like glutes just as their lock screen. Hey, I'm sure I've had in it prep. saved in, in my mind. In prep, I might do that. I might just <laughs> put Jack's ass on my foot. Hey, he just, he, he, he's again someone who just encompasses what bodyboarding is. He's, yeah. you know, just such a sound guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So on here, looking at your page. So yeah, this is one shot, right? Well, I looked at this and I was like, fuck me. It's like, you're just a, sm a slightly smaller uh, fucking Keon in this shot. Yeah. Mate, like, that, you've got that, like that. a half vacuum going on, arms open. So. Mate, my, I think at that point, my like my vacuum was just, I was puffing for breath, I think, at that point. But, um, mm. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that, that's a pose that I did take from, from Keon. That looks vacuum. fucking sick. Yeah, you've got great taper there, man. Oh, great taper. It's a really good shot. They, they made me look good, man. <laughs> and then you've got finn on on this side how was it competing with finn finn is is such a cool guy yeah he is my goodness. he made as soon as i saw him he just like i wasn't i had my boys around me so it was great to, to go in with them anyway but yeah he he you could see finn is like i've said it before he's like the life of the party man the guy yeah. the guy you know just himself he was so chill which made others feel really chill when mm. we were backstage he was you know, it was unfair that we couldn't really be close because of the fact that, you know, COVID regulations and stuff. I wouldn't say unfair, sorry. I mean, the yeah. the rules and regulations, of course, mm. just, even the show going ahead was 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 great, but we couldn't, of course, communicate and be as, you know, close-knit as we wanted to be. So, or as everyone, I'm sure, wanted to be. So everyone was on yeah. their own. It was a little bit quiet, but Finn didn't give the toss. Finn was, yeah. Just, yeah. Finn was just like, yeah. Like everyone had their headphones in. He's like, mate, lighten up, sort of thing. And, and it made me lighten up big time. So um, yeah. Finn was great to have him there. So cool to have him there. Man. Yeah. I, if, I, like, we've obviously, I've obviously had Finn on here, but like the first time I met Finn, because yeah. I, I know him because he's a friend of a friend. He's a friend of uh, Tim Stewart. I don't know if you know Tim. Um, but I, I met him at my first show. That's how I like met him. Oh yeah. And then after the facts, he ended up getting coached by AJ as well. And that's how that yeah. happened. Like it's come full circle. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's cool that, um, you two both were on stage together. That was like, yeah. like it, it, for, for MBM and like that camp in general, that was, that was cool. That was, was really good. cool. Right. And to be fair, the shots don't do those guys justice, man. Finn looks incredible. Danny looks incredible. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, um, they all looked incredible. That yeah. really yeah. incredible. No one, no one that I saw because I was watching as well. I watched yeah. it live. Um, no one I saw was like off. You know, nah. everyone was. Everyone had brought something special, considering oh. how fucking hard the year had been. You know, like in person, they they looked a lot harder than than they look right here. They looked, yeah, in, yeah, really good. That's the thing, right? With um being natty is mm. that pictures never do natty's justice <laughs> yeah these pictures, man. Thing that. i've heard a few people say that i was like oh, i've done it so i've had to take some some, some shots like in the in the hotel room or at home just to yeah. keep them, you know i was this yeah. hard not that hard so <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah man look at this shit what the fuck is this hamster? 
<laughs> and right. that's uh, that that for a first timer is fucking nuts. I hope you know that, right? That's sick. That's incredible, man. I didn't. Yeah. And they all look. Just learning, bro. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, just learning. Just, just learning, learning, man. It was it was actually cool to see how everyone looked, especially when the shots come out, because yeah. you never really see what you look like. And so when I saw him, I was like, "Wow, fair play." Mm. When you were uh, backstage and you first saw everyone who you were competing against, what was your first thought? Mate, I'll be so honest with you, bro. I was so focused on myself. I was so focused on. Mm. Firstly, warming up because I was quite cold at the time. Yeah. Um. So I was feeling like a little bit cold, and so I was just trying to warm up. So I was just trying to get my legs warm, just yeah. trying to get my poses warm and stuff like that. And when I saw everyone, um, I was like, "Wow!" Like everyone's physiques are just fantastic. But I was really just trying to focus on not crapping myself, bro. I'll be so honest, like on stage, <laughs> like I was, it was, it was like that. But um, yeah, that was that was me. And so physique wise, I just felt like I I was just trying to focus on myself, just trying to look yeah. my best in the mirror. And and yeah, man, that that was it really. Yeah, you came through big time. Like it, it, yeah, that was an awesome, awesome show to watch. Like it was it was good that they managed to make it live. Yeah. Like, that was that's a blessing because it was really cool watching yeah. you and Finn and everyone else up there. So yeah. It was good, man. It was actually awesome. Yeah. I saw this post. This shit, this shit is sick. I want one. <laughs> Mate, I'll get one out to you for sure. <laughs> where, where, where are you getting this from? Um, the the t shirt. Yeah. That was from I found it on on a website. I just legit just. just Mate, wanted. you could market that. That could be. I I, I, I was <laughs> that's like just stick your name on it somewhere. That's your t shirt. <laughs> I found like a small business. He was he was selling this t shirt, and I was like, wow, it, I love it. Yeah, I'm that aware. that fits. That fits. Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah. It was actually so cool. But so look yeah. at this picture real quick. So what when was this? So that was when I kind of started my weight loss journey. Um late 2017. Okay, so late 2017. Yeah. Already here though. Look at you. You could tell that you're you don't you were doing athletics. Like you could tell that you were a sporty guy. Uh, my sister, my, yeah, like I was into football. I was even with football where I was, you know, at a decent level with football. Um I went to like a, a private school where they kind of put us on like a nutrition program where they kind of put us on like a, a weight, when I say weight training program, but it was more like very lightweight program just to keep in tune with like the athletes program. Mm -hmm. um, I was only there for like a couple of months, but in that time I really did love what I was doing at the, at the facility down there. Um, and then I just, once I stopped football, I stopped going to the gym altogether. Mm. Uh, and so I just kind of packed on the weight a little bit, mm -hmm. as you can obviously see. Tubs, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even remember what I weighed then, to be fair. I think I must have been like... I don't like know. 190, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, I was definitely like... if we're talking, Probably I knew about kilos. I was probably about 90, 92 kilos there, 94. 94 kilos, I think I was there. Okay, yeah. Um, so I don't know how much... What, um, so then, what was your weight here? So that was just coming up to the show. So I think I was about like one... 80, 180, between 180 and 185 around that time. Okay. So the the weight difference between these two pictures wasn't that much, right? It mustn't have been, no. Yeah. I mean, what, what is 180? Um, I'll quickly do it. 180. It's like, I don't know, if they're probably five pounds difference between these two photos or something. So 180 is 81 kilos. So yeah, okay. bro. From that post, I was I must have been like ninety two kilos, and in this post I was eighty one. So okay, that's not yeah. Like it, here's the thing as well, you look in this picture like twice the like because of because of obviously you've peeled down and because of your structure as well. I think you look twice the size you actually are. Yeah, you, you do. You look like. Um, you look like you look like you do two twelve. <laughs> like you're on your way there. You're on your way yeah, there for two twelve. That'll be an awesome category to compete in. Man. <laughs> what is your uh, plan in terms of actually competing then? So you uh, do you want to go for uh, IFBB at any point, or is it just WMBF? Uh, bro, honestly, um, one person I saw that well, I was like, wow, was uh, I don't know if you follow J Made. 
or, yeah. or yeah, he he yeah, Jason. He's even, but isn't he not based in Burns? I'm not too sure if he maybe, but um, he competed as an actual in PCA mm. um, and smashed it, you know. Yeah. Um, and all the like, I think he was up against people who weren't, you know. Um, yeah, who were a bit more sensible. Yeah. And so I mean, if he can do it, and as many people like him, he can do. It, I feel like I just want to try and progress as much as I can as an actual. Um, mm. You know, really commit to an off season. That I haven't really yeah. before. See the difference there. See if it is feasible to keep moving up, yeah. upwards, and just progress the stages really, um, yeah. because you know, the the I know that natural bodybuilding it kind of caps at some point for some people. But I've met, like I said, still being new and naive to the sport. I just want to treat my potential as mm. new and naive as possible. Let's let's talk about like let's get into this topic, right? Because a lot of people like at the amount of times I've heard that over the past like four and a bit years that I've been training. Yeah. I I I've come to a realization the amount of times that people have said that that's not possible, and then you've made it possible. I don't oh. think there is. I I don't think there is a limit. I really don't. I, like I, the amount of people who are like, oh, that guy on Instagram must be on gear. Or let's say, yeah, David, he must be on gear, right? right. The amount of times I've heard that for different people, mm. like, and and knowing what I've done as well, I'm like, no, like, there's no reason. Yeah, sure, someone might be on gear, but probably not. Mm. <laughs> like you, people Honestly. people struggle to wrap their heads around that, and okay. I, I I think being naive is good. Yeah, because legit, you, right. there is no limit for you then. I don't because I'll be honest, bro. I can look at I can look at her physique right now and not tell you whether it's natural or, or yeah. enhanced. I'll be I'll be brutally honest. And even when there, I like I said, I followed Keon a lot, and when he competed um, at the Arnold's, and he said that he was a, a a natural. I was like, well, I didn't expect anything less. And then there was a lot of like people <laughs> when <went> on. <laughs> On on a few ads um, podcasts, they were like, yeah, were really? asked, were you were you natural?" And you know, it's just something that I just think, bro. If if there's people actually, and bear in mind, I'm just going to take him as being honest. I, I don't get why anyone would lie by it. Yeah. Um, but you know, irrespective, if you're saying that you are natural, then you're giving other people hope to progress to that stage. And I'm going to be as naive as possible, and I don't care. I'm just literally going to. Say yeah, if he can do it, then there's so many others can do it. Not just yeah. me. There's yeah, a lot. There's no reason he can't. I mean, yeah. a good example is looking at um, any of the guys who are at the pro level of the mm. natural bodybuilding. Like, let's let's go with David K, for example. Yeah. I mean, you look at a physique like that, and this that when you see shit like this, you're like. Bear in mind, I've been on that stage. I know what I look like under that light right. versus that, you know? And he's a tall guy as well. So then in my head, I'm like, that if, if someone can look like this naturally, that you could just keep going, man. You could just Mate, keep going. It's just, you just look at him and you're like, <laughs> just nuts, bro. Yeah. And that's why, that's why I appreciate, I appreciate... I never really used to appreciate natural bodybuilding. Like I never really knew the difference between yeah. natural and um, the guys on 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 the big stages. Mm. Um, I just always, when I looked at bodybuilding, I obviously go straight to the big. You always go to the grandest stage, yeah. so you look at those guys. And then when I saw natural bodybuilding, I was like, oh, these guys are flipping shredded, but they're they're a little bit smaller <laughs> than mm. than the guys on 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 the Olympia, of course. Um, but when you look at people like him, when you look at people like Bob Waterhouse, yeah. when you look at people like AJ, when you look at people like Keefe, mm. you know, flip. It's just, it, it takes you aback and you're like, these people work just as hard, if not harder, than the people who are enhanced. And I don't think you can, it would yeah. be very silly for me to say, I should jump on without having the same sort of hard work ethic yeah. and, and audacious vision. I, I've, I've already like, um, I've already, like spoke about with like various people like family included about the conversation of jumping on like gear and stuff yeah. like that and for me it's it's something that honestly is still so far out of my head right now because i don't feel like i've I, like i have the feeling that i haven't been in this sport long enough to to even think about that realistically and yeah. 
Uh, it's almost, I don't want to say it's something you have to earn, like you have to earn the right to do that. But mm -hmm. until I feel like I've accomplished what I need to have accomplished to even consider that, I'm not going to think about it, you know? Yeah. Um, like, yeah. I, 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 I think mean, yeah. If no one ever explains to me what, you know, a steroid is, I'd legit be thinking that I can attain a level of physique and I'd legit just keep going for it. Yeah. Not not necessarily in, in hopes to win, but I'll just keep growing. Like, I'm just all about progression. Mm -hmm. and so there will always be a, a, a progression naturally for me to attain. Yeah. And so that's why it really does. That's what intrigues me more, if I'm honest. Mm. Yeah, man, it's uh, <laughs> it's exciting. Uh, I'd, uh, this is part probably why, like, I th again, it's like what you said earlier. Like, the reason bodybuilding is so appealing to me is purely just because whatever whatever happens in the day, mm. that that is the one thing that will always progress. Yeah, you know, and that is that will always keep moving, and that's like you know that that shows that shows like your your drive for everything else. Like, this is another thing as well. Anyone who's got anyone out there who's watching. If you want to have just a crazy as shit physique, just deadlift. That's mm. that's the the thing as well that I've seen with natties as well. They yeah. they get ridiculously strong, and that's you know what it. it's nuts because I hated hip injured. Like I didn't mm. do hip hip injured for a solid for a solid year. Maybe I, probably at the start of my journey, I never really deadlifted. Yeah. I just hate. I wasn't good at it. Yeah. I didn't know the execution. I didn't know anything of like. Just, just didn't like the movement at all. Um, and now it's like one of my favorite. And it's like when you see people like Keefe um, put in the weight that he's putting, you're like, you've done this for years. People should not try and <laughs> try and break their backs, trying to attain this yeah. execution and this 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 strength that this guy has. It's mm. it's it's ridiculous. And this is someone who, you know, I've watched him and and, and I think that he's just a phenomenal. Um, bodybuilder for not yeah. like this guy loves what he does yeah and, and one thing that you can't take away from this guy is his passion yeah. and you can't lift that weight without the passion that, for the sport oh, i can lift that weight if i don't have the passion for the sport yeah. that he has yeah so, like that's the thing with keefe he's convinced before yeah. he's doing the set that he's yeah. gonna get what he wants out of that set. yeah yeah and it shows yeah. like that like that rep there that we just saw I'm not good. Like, if I wasn't in the right headspace, there's no way I'd be able to do a rep like that. Like, yeah. this rep. And look how low his safety is as well. He's that confident. <laughs> if I bail out. Mate, I call oh. him the Viking. I really call it, like, honestly. Yeah. I call him the Viking. I think he's so, so cool. I, I want to I wanna see the um, the two superpowers coming together. I want to see you and Keith in the same room doing the session together. <laughs> oh, oh bro. It looks like how awesome would that be? I yeah, think that'd be sick. Was, uh, maybe he comes down, maybe arrange something, but he's just mate. Let me not take away from him or his training because phenomenal, phenomenal yeah. guy, phenomenal um, training, phenomenal physique, man. Mm. Phenomenal, just phenomenal. Awesome. Let's get around to some questions then, real quick. Yeah, um, I don't know how much time you got, but I imagine you've got a single. No, it's all good. I literally had a meal before I came on, so I'm good. good to go. Um, let me go on my Instagram. No, I'm not Let's see what we got. Okay. Um, so we've, I think we've answered some of these. Oh, okay. Was there a specific moment in time where you realized that you wanted to do bodybuilding? I think we have kind of covered that, but yeah, was there like a spark moment where you touched the dumbbell and you were like, "Fuck, I, this is it." <laughs> you know? uh, nah, not not really. To be fair. I think yeah, maybe just in like you know, when you start seeing progressions for the first time, you're like, "Wow!" And then you yeah. just get you just getting immersed in the progression. Yeah, that's so. pretty. That's pretty addictive. Yeah, that is pretty addictive. Um, for me, it was. Well, when was it for me? For me, it was yeah, it was pretty much the same thing, just seeing that progression week to week and, and falling in love with it. And that was it. Um, another question. Um, do you see yourself ever going to the RFBB? Of course, someone's going to ask a question like that. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, man, if progression requires that, then yeah, for sure. Um, cool. Definitely. Like, that would yeah. be... Why not? I wouldn't... I can't hold... 
progression, man. Honestly, like, yeah. if, I know there's so many times that people, like, I, I get so many questions similar, like, mm. you ever see yourself going to the Olympia and all that kind of stuff? And mm -hmm. I'm like, bro, if progression requires it. If I'm progressing at that rate, and if mm. I'm progressing, I don't think anyone would say no to, mm -hmm. to not wanting to become a pro or not wanting to get to that stage or that level. If your progression allows you to get to that level, then, and yeah, Keefe, mm. for example, you know, people who just say there's no sort of limit, limit to one's progression, you just keep progressing and wherever that takes you is where it takes you. So, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, <clears throat> I, we've had this one before, I'm pretty sure, but uh, someone's asking um, if you could take one body part from Ronnie Coleman, any body part, which would it be and why? It has to be his back, obviously. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what else are you gonna take? Yeah. Well, do you know what I mean? Or, or 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 his legs. I mean, when you're yeah. squatting, you know, or, 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 or leg pressing nearly a, or over a thousand pounds and yeah, squatting 500, 500 pounds is crazy. So, mm -hmm. uh, but his back's just nuts in it. Like, it's just it's just not real. Yeah. Yeah, but definitely, definitely the back for me. I think that that would be everyone's answer to that question. Um, <clears throat> oh, we've got another one down here from Joe. Shall I ask that now or at the end? Fuck it, I'll ask that one now. Um, so we have a food question Yeah, that we always do. I don't know how well acquainted you are with this show, but we always tend to ask it. Uh, death row food. What is your what? final meal? Three courses, start a main dessert. What are you doing? For okay, I'm probably gonna go up right now. Star, I'll probably go for some calamari. Nice, some yes. Bougie star. Yeah. With some nice crispy calamari with some like an array of different sauces. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, main for oh, main. I'm I'm a big fan of pasta, like a really yeah. good Italian pasta. Just just. A really nice pasta with some some out of this world bolognese. Mm. Um, why not add a bit of sushi on the side as well? Yeah, cool. yeah. yeah, fine. And maybe even like katsu roll. I don't know. Just yeah, just bring me yes, <laughs> all of it, all the food. Legit, legit. mix yeah, them all up. Yeah. A nice Italian dish, <laughs> and then a side of sushi. Um, and you got no, sorry, one more. You got to throw in some chicken wings in there. Sorry, chicken wings. Yeah, you got it. Right, so we got, we've got bolognese. Yeah, good pasta, chicken wings, katsu roll, sushi. Okay, then what? Anything else? Or are you going on to dessert now? <laughs> yeah, that would be it for me. I'll, I'll, I'll probably <laughs> stay room for <laughs> for some dessert, bro. Yeah. Um, for me, dessert would be. I don't know, just, have you seen a Maya cookie dealer? Yes, um, yes, I've had a few of their cookies. Yeah, the ones in it, like, just some kind of ridiculous American cookie like that with, yeah. you know, a pot of some fantastic quality ice cream. Um, right now, my mind is going towards Hagen does. Mm -hmm. Well, mate, I'm about to go eat. This is bad, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dangerous game we're playing, oh, man. Game, this is making me, like, when you said wings, I'm like, oh, I could do some with some chicken. Honestly, bro. <laughs> bro, bro. Yeah, it's a problem. But, yeah, um, definitely a beautiful, hot, gooey cookie. Cookies, not one. Yeah, it's got to be more than one. Yeah, and then some... some well, we're talking like Tesco's finest, like um, triple chalk. Ah, we're, we're talking American. We, you, you're still stuck on the American ones. Yeah, yeah. To, to be fair... You know they're like a pound of food each, right? Yeah, <laughs> listen, bro. Well, I mean, we had a conversation <laughs> about... We had a conversation about my post-workout. Um, yeah. My post-workout, my post-show. Um, show, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, like, I was 180 on stage. Two weeks later, I was... Off season weight, two hundred and five pounds. Not of water, of legit, just off season weight. Like, mate, so, like eating. <laughs> it's not that a is a lot to like. Obviously, it, everyone's different. For me, if I did that, oh my god, I couldn't do it. I'd I was, be ruined. I was, I was like, I laugh, I laugh at it, yeah, because there was a problem. <laughs> but now it's like yeah no. uh, for me i i it's probably a good thing that i was like a bit ill 
Oh, I, uh, I, I just had some fruit juice. I, I barely got, I, I mean, to be fair, I could have kept going all evening. Wow. But I, <laughs> I held back. So I had like, um, I went to Nando's with everyone, I had like a two person platter to myself, of course. Uh, and then had donuts so. uh, that someone had bought me as well. And then got back. I was like, do you know what? I fancy fr- some mango juice. Went and grabbed some mango juice, drank some. Oh, Stomach yeah. cramped up. I was done. That was it. <laughs> and that was probably right, a good man, thing. Hey, that, that was for the best, man. There's people who really handled their post show really well. For me, it was, again, a lesson learned 100%. And um, just can't, well, can't wait to, you know, not replicate these lessons again um, and just, you know, evolve and progress from then. So yeah. I know the recovery phase is, is extremely important when it comes to, you know, that post show window. So yeah. yeah, I'll be able to. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've told this story before. Um, AJ, AJ, if he if he ends up watching this, because I know he sometimes watches, he'll he'll know exactly what this is about. So we, uh, so this was like I don't know how long post show. It wasn't long though, less than a month probably. And um, I bought like various items of food which I obviously hadn't had around me for the past mm. like six plus months. Yeah. So I, well, the first ones was cereal. Okay. Do you know what? I fancy cereal. So I bought a box of cereal and I was like, hey, look, we'll obviously portion this out and have cereal, like, you know. Yeah. Not be a dick with it. Anyway, I was working one night and shit hit the fan at work. Really fucking rough shit time at work. Came back. Hadn't had time to prep food because of work. Mm. Uh, was p- kind of pissed off. It was like 11 at night or something. Yeah. And I just got like, this, I, I grabbed the bowl, grabbed the milk, grabbed my cereal, Grab my scale, went to my room, just started watching Netflix. Poured shit into the bowl, like actually weighed out the fucking cereal. Yeah. And then poured milk in, ate it, and just carried on watching Netflix, but then just kept pouring <laughs> cereal in. Yeah. Like t- until I pretty much finished the whole box of fucking cereal. <laughs> and I had check in the next day. Oh, so, AJ, I, <laughs> I was like, hey, look, I'm not going to lie to you, man. I ate a whole box of cereal last night. <laughs> I'm not going to have cereal in my flat anymore. Like, it's oh, okay. a trigger food for me. I can't eat cereal. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like, I live with, well, there's five, six of us in total. So, yeah. with my mum, my dad, my sisters, you know, the, like, the food now, I feel like after having that sort of post-show thing for me, it mm-hmm. kind of allowed me just to be, you know, just on the money now, like, where food, you kind of locate the problem and then you deal with it and then just mm. kind of reestablish it. So after that, learn and now it's just just yeah, clean on the money. So yeah, you you get to make mistakes once. Yeah, that's yeah. Fine. It, like yeah. it's a part of the learning process. Um, I'm trying to think. Wait, let me look at questions again. Um, okay, we've kind of already answered that. I'll ask it anyway, because there might be someone else. Was there anyone who had a direct influence on you uh, becoming a bodybuilder? Like, that you know in, like, in like whether it was a guy at your gym or whatever? Or... Um, it's interesting. I still don't even consider myself a, a bodybuilder yet, but um, my... Uh... <laughs> Shut up, man. Shut up. You're a bodybuilder. Wait, you can't, oh, you can't, man. you don't get to say that. <laughs> <laughs> you're winning shit wait i didn't even know like <laughs> so cool i don't know the moment where i was like i'm a bodybuilder i didn't i actually didn't know that um, but um one person who i know was a massive influence on my journey uh was a guy who linked me up with aj which was mm-hmm. um one of my good friends at the gym he was the manager as well um mm-hmm. ollie okay His named ollie he's the one who showed me aj for the first time and this was like months before yeah. i even came into contact with him and he was like just telling me about how much knowledge this guy holds. I think this is definitely around 2017 when... Mm-hmm. Uh, Shit, AJ, man. So this is early. Yeah. This, this early. is when AJ was still actually, like, kind of just coming up. As Legit. Well. So, I, and, and when he showed me, I was just like, uh, like, was it, like, I wasn't t- I wasn't immersed in the sport to sort of, to really care about it. I was like, oh, well, I'm not even, I just want to lose weight right now. This guy is, you know, a bodybuilder, you can see. So I don't, really want to be that yeah uh, but I, from then on i kind of followed aj and i was like yeah let me just follow him and then i was just i would always like watch his posts or or, or just take what he was saying because he was putting out a lot of educational content i was like wow he just come off the back of the prep as well and i was like wow yeah uh, and so ollie's the kind of like that person that kind of 
made me aware of him. Um, yeah. And I, it made me aware of that kind of bodybuilding um, style, mm-hmm. lifestyle, sorry. And I was very intrigued, especially after seeing AJ in his early, in his, yeah. in his early years alongside and he knew Jack Fulburn as well. So I was like, oh snap, you know, uh, yeah. you know, Mr. Mr. Bum over here, like Mr. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know his name at the time, but I was like, you know, you know this guy. I was like, oh snap. I'm gonna oh, clip this bit and make sure Jack sees it. <laughs> I don't want them to know that he's Mr. Bum now. Mate, uh, no, he was like, <laughs> and I could I follow Jack um, because Jack just he was I liked his attitude on his um or his story, sorry. Mm. So he was always like just talking and he loved trainers. I love trainers. So he, yeah. we kind of connected as well. Um, but yeah, He's like Jack, please. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so you're, you're into shoes, right? Yeah. Okay. So talk me through like what, what, what sort of shoes? Like what are you, what are you? About? Uh, so right now, like I'm a big fan of like Nikes. Um, yeah. You know, I'm a big fan of Jordans. Um, you know, recently just into like the Jordan Fours, the retros, the nice. black cats. Yeah. Um, I'm big into retros. I've got, I've actually got my fucking my pine greens just on the floor next to me. Cold, the ones, yeah. Yes, all, uh, I'm big. I'm big into retro ones. Like they're yeah. my like mids and highs in general. Like mm. my kind of shoe. They they they've started like popping off again recently. Like yeah. last, last year, but. Um, no one really used to wear them back in like when I was in secondary school. Uh-huh. But yeah, big on big on them, big on air forces. Do you love um, um, some air forces? And and to be fair, this is one of the things about prep. It made me very, it, like I said, it made me quite simple. So quite a lot of the clothes that I had, quite a lot of um, I had a lot a, a lot of unnecessary stuff. And so I was into like you know my bougie sort of designers and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And I just kind of got rid of them. Like I kind of dumbed down my taste a little bit because I kind of was yeah. just like, I don't really need that kind of stuff right now. Or, or it kind of like complicated a lot too much. I didn't need that many shoes. Yeah. Uh, I had so many shoes. And I was like, oh, what am I going to wear? That kind of thing. So I kind of just like gave them away or sold them or whatever it was. And just kind of just wow. stick to my fours, my ones and, and air forces. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm stuck right now on the retros, but like I, I'm kind of the opposite of you. I've, mm-hmm. I used to never be really big into shoes, but like in the past couple of years, I've got big into shoes. Like, so now like I'm looking, I've got like a little list of like shoes that I want. So I want, um, I want the Chicago original colorway mids for um, the ones. And then I also, for some reason, mm-hmm. this is, this is probably going against everything you just said, but I'm really tempted to get a pair of Balenciagas. Really? I just I, I don't know why. I just why not? What um what 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 ones? Um fuck what are they fucking called? Um like the triple S's or the sock runners, the speed. The triple S's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so like the big bulky ones. Yeah. Um the the issue with though with me though is I'm size eleven. Yeah. Okay. And I'm concerned about looking like an actual clown. Mate, yeah, they're they're very bulky. That's all. They're I big think. shoes. Yeah, yeah. Big shoes, so. that's why I always wear like um like Jordans or like basketball boots, like all LeBrons or something. Anything that's kind of flat. Yeah, and not there's not a lot to it because otherwise, man, I look like I'm on stilts. <laughs> so, <laughs> I try to avoid it. So, but you know what? No, Jordans work on work on low, um, tall people. So I mean, you can yeah. get as many Jordans as you want. And yeah. I mean, for me. I'm only a size seven, so well, I squeeze into a six, six and a half when I want to get like a, you know, some money off or whatever. Yeah. But um, yeah, the Jordans, I never re- really used to wear like that, the mids or the highs just because, you know, especially being like a smaller guy, they kind of like, I didn't think they'd suit. And then I just got into them recently and I was just like, nah, these are lit. So I just started wearing them a lot more and yeah. um, just massive fan of them. So even with like Balenciaga and stuff like that, like I've got a pair, but just just don't wear them really just yeah. don't know where to i wouldn't know where to, to wear them apart from like an event or an out mm. or and, and that like with my boys or whatever like that yeah. so um, and it hasn't been much of that because of lockdown so it's just yeah been... <laughs> yeah for sure Wait, i'm gonna have to put you in uh in connection with uh christian do you know um coached by christian yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he, big he, into his yeah. shoes man he's I big him. Into i see him this guy, no, but he's he's his his, his taste in shoes, um he very similar. Um, but you guys are like very like um 
I, I call you guys like sneakerheads. So you're really like into like, um, not like what everyone sees on like social media and stuff like that, but you actually like a pair of shoes and it'll just be for you sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and that's what I've started just getting into. So I like quite a lot of the shoes that he has. I like the Yeezys that he had because um, he, he likes his Yeezys. He's got, he bought, um, I remember I watched the video and he just went through his shoes. I was like, wow. Yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah man. Like got- uh, the, what, uh, he's got a pair of shoes that I want. He's got a pair of, um, they're Jordan 1s. Mm. I think they're highs, but they're in like a a colorway that he won on a raffle. Oh, yeah? And I think it's like the it's like the Day of the Dead colorway or something. It's got like a fucking skull on the front. It's like I'll I'll, I'll, I'll find a picture and send it to you yeah. later. But like yeah. I, I I saw those shoes and I've been trying to find some now and <laughs> appeared, man. Can't find yeah. any. Legit, like it's there's, there's so many shoes out there now where it's just like don't even know which one I'm which I'm more fond of. Sometimes like, I'm a really big fan of the Easy right now. Yeah. Uh, so, I've had uh, I've had one pair of three fifties once. Oh yeah, uh, I think I might still have them somewhere, but I don't know where they are. They're probably yeah. back home at my mum's. But three yeah, fifties are lovely, and mm. um, they just brought a new sort of futuristic type Yeezy. They get oh, into I saw that. Um, they're getting too futuristic, but I know that I just will find something. I'll be like, oh, these are cool. So I'm like, yeah. I don't know. We're coming out of lockdown soon, so I'm gonna want to start shopping yeah. again. I'm good. At, I'm good straight to Selfridges. <laughs> I'm going around. I'm looking. I'm yeah, looking man. at all the shoes. Boy, you boy, treat yourself, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, should we call it in there? We've been going for yeah. an hour and a half, man. It's hey. been a pleasure. This Bro, has been fun. Appreciate you, man. Big time. Yeah, we'll um when when shit opens back up, um we'll have to sort something out. Uh yeah. whether that, that be uh Rotherham or wherever. Yeah, man. Um we'll have to set something up and yeah, we'll try and get you back on again at some point if you're down for that. Oh uh, bro, it'd be also it'd be also to speak with um Jono as well. I know that he missed out, but it would have been cool to just meet up with him as well. So. yeah, we'll we'll sort something out. I do actually now want to get you on with a guest at some point, someone yeah. else. I think that's one of the things I love doing about with this show is yeah. just getting people that we've had on and just putting them in a room with with a different person who they haven't actually spoken to. So yeah, I might try and sort something out and see if we That'd can get cool. on with someone. That would yeah. be really cool, man. Yeah, stay well, tuned, guys. Thanks for having me on. Thank yeah. you for having me on, man. Yeah, God bless, man. Um, yeah, th- guys, thank you for listening and or watching. Um, this has been off the script, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>